Hello again. In this video we're going to cover something that causes more than a few people a lot of headaches and that's centering your polar scope or in particular centering the reticule in your polar scope. Now what we're going to do is we're going to show you a couple of little tweaks and modifications to just make things a little bit easier uh, and then we'll go through a centering procedure that might be just a little bit different than what you, you've seen before or read about. Uh, just a brief introduction to, to what centering your polar scope means. When your mount is tracking, it tracks in right ascension. That's this rotation. Your polar scope looks through this axis. So when you actually line up your mount, you need it to be centered as much as possible on the North Star, or the, the, well not actually the North Star, just slightly off the North Star to the actual polar axes. And so the more precise that your alignment of your polar scope is, the more precise the alignment of your mount will be. Now it'll affect imaging a lot more than it will visual but even so it's just it's just a good procedure to go through and, and just you know another little thing to to alter in the chain to, to make everything you know as right as you possibly can so first of all let's just take a close look at my polar scope right we're now in close up on my polar scope and the first thing that you might have noticed is the first one of the little tweaks that I'm going to show you. And these are two tweaks that were shown to me by Gary Allers from the EQ6 Yahoo group, which if you've got an NEQ6 or one of those variants, it's well worth joining the, the Yahoo group. Uh, it's simply called EQ6, and there's a lot of knowledgeable people in there. And if you are having an issue with, uh, with an EQ mount, it's quite possible that if you go in there and ask there's somebody that's seen it, done it, and, and been there, and it'll sort you right out. Now, what we've done is we have small thumb screws in the polar scope that are replacing the grub screws. Now, believe me, this makes things a lot easier. And the reason being that when you're making an adjustment, it's now easy to turn two of these screws at the same time. It's a bit like when you make adjustments to the altitude and azimuth on your actual mount you can sort of just ease off on one and tighten up on the other to gently move that reticule over and center it now the next tweak is i don't know if your mount's the same but i find that the actual focusing ring on my mount is just a, a bit slack the, the threads are quite loose and it's just easily moved about now we can fix that but also what we can do is make that centering even easier and what we do is remove this completely and the next thing we use is what's called a plumber's o-ring now you may need one you may need two of these and they're quite a decent substantial rubber ring what you do is place that into your polar scope hole and then thread your lens eyepiece in there what that will do is once you get the threads catching is you will actually sandwich that o-ring or those two o-rings depending on what sort of spacing you've got it actually presses against the reticule which is only just about it's obviously it just tightens everything up here now I actually depend on that being fairly tight and not having much rotation in it because I use something that I developed called a polar cam or that's what I call it and it's basically a webcam that allows me to push it straight on to my polar scope like so saves up on me getting sore knees or a wet backside from sitting on the grass and everything so that's that little bit next we're going to go on to an actual alignment and I'm going to show you how I centre my reticule right don't worry we haven't changed channels on you or anything we're going to call this the TV aerial method now there's a good thing about British TV aerials and that is that we've got two sort of datums that we can use on them the first one is that it's got quite a nice long straight edge to it as you can see here now also if you look closer at the TV aerial and you look at the point or the tip of the, the straight part you'll see that we've also got a small feature there that we can also use to our advantage now this particular aerial is quite suitable because it's surrounded by sky there's no particular background to it which makes it that it's going to be easy to to be able to spot through it and and, and just you know the contrast is nice for, for looking through the polar scope 
Now this particular aerial is I would say about 50 feet away, it's slightly zoomed in on the photograph and if you've got a feature that's sort of 50 feet away then that's fine, um, you know you don't have to use a star to set up your scope and you know something about 50 feet away is perfectly adequate. So next we're just going to go on to the position that you want to be in for actually lining up your polar scope. Okay, there's nothing worse than going through this stage and then you're ending up with a sore neck or a sore back or being contorted in all sorts of stupid positions because you're just going to lose your patience and rush the job. So what you need to do is tilt your mount using your altitude and azimuth bolts to get pointed at the feature that you're going to use, which in our case is the TV aerial, and find yourself something comfortable to sit on that is just at the right height so that you can sit there with your eye to the polar scope and make your adjustments and you can take your time because if you take your time at this stage it's going to pay dividends at a later point when you come to do your alignments and everything and like I've said before it's only basically a, a, a do once procedure this and it is worthwhile just taking your time over it so next let's have a look what we actually see through the polar scope Right, as I said earlier, uh, we're not going to do it exactly the same as you may have read or seen previously. Most people use the centre of the crosshairs in the middle of the scope. I don't like to use those because you actually can't see through them. It actually blocks out the view so you can be out a little bit. What I prefer to do is to use the straight lines. If you imagine that because we've got a cross, we actually have four straight lines coming out at 90 degrees differences. Um, coming out from the center, if you like. So what we do is we line up one of the lines with the TV aerial, rotate the mount in 180 degrees, and then using the thumb screws that we showed you earlier, we actually just change half of that distance. And eventually when we keep going backwards and forwards, each time that we rotate, the line will fall exactly on that same line on the TV aerial, as you're seeing now which means that that scope is now perfectly centered. As you can see, the straight lines are falling exactly on that TV aerial uh, horizontal line at, at each sort of rotation of 90 degrees, and that's what we're aiming for. Now also, to sort of verify that you've got it right, what you can do next is you can move to the outside using that small feature on the TV aerial that I showed you earlier, and put that on the perimeter of the circle and then start doing revolutions again and we'll just show you that. Right, as you can now see, I've used the altitude and azimuth bolts on my mount and moved that television aerial in the view so that it's that, that little feature on the tip of the aerial is now touching the perimeter of the circle. And as you can see, we can rotate that mount through a full 360 degrees and that small feature on the TV aerial still stays on the perimeter of the circle, which means that we've got that, that reticule practically perfectly centered and as I said it's something that you need to just take your time with and make sure you're comfortable when you're doing it and you know you'll get really good results and it will make a difference to your alignments and to your tracking and that's about it for this one so I hope it's helped you out and once again thanks for watching